Hey everyone, this is Salman for WPMU Dev, and today we'll be discussing a topic that's on the mind of everyone who's interested in WordPress. Why is WordPress free? There's a lot of history behind this, but the clear answer is that WordPress is a free and open source software that you can use, modify, and redistribute as you wish. And by WordPress here, I mean WordPress.org, the self-hosted free open source platform, not WordPress.com, its related but totally different commercial cousin. I've included a link in the description which explains the differences between them in detail. But you may wonder, I still have to spend money to use WordPress, right? Also, yes. While WordPress, the software, is free, using it to create a live website does incur some costs. This isn't a limitation of WordPress as such. All websites hosted online work this way, whether you use WordPress to build them or not. You need to rent resources on a web host to serve your WordPress site to the world. Your WordPress hosting costs as little as $4 per month to thousands of dollars depending on your site's needs. Most website owners settle for something in between, striking the perfect balance between value and cost. To better understand this, let's take a look at the license file included with every WordPress download. It states that this program is free software and you can redistribute it and or modify it under the terms of the new general public license as published by the Free Software Foundation, either version 2 of the license or at your option any later version. Free Software, GNU, General Public License, Free Software Foundation. But what exactly do all these terms mean? Is there a catch? Well, kinda, but not really. To understand this better, we have to go back in history and take a look at the origin of Free Software Movement, or FSM for short. FSM is a social movement started with the goal to guarantee certain freedoms to software makers and users alike. It's inspired heavily by the traditions and philosophy of the 1970s hacker culture and academia, which encouraged sharing knowledge and DIY. FSM was started in 1983 by Richard Stallman, then working at MIT, by launching the GNU project. It was, and still is, a mass collaboration free software movement the likes of which humanity had never seen before. Its turning point came in 1985 when Stallman established the Free Software Foundation to support this movement. A few years later, in 1989, Stallman wrote the GNU General Public License, or GPL, for use with programs released under the GNU project. The GPL license allowed people to study, run, share, and modify the software code as they wished. But why free? You see, code isn't like tangible goods. For instance, if you have an apple and I take it from you, I now have an apple and you don't have one. However, if you have a software and you share its code with me, we both have the software now. In a way, code is something intangible like knowledge or ideas. You don't lose your knowledge or ideas if you share them with others. On the contrary, it only makes them even more widespread. Another ethical argument free and open source advocates put forward is that since software can be copied and distributed at scale with minimal resources, the super high profit margins make it unjustifiable beyond a certain point. Most of the richest companies in the world today are software companies. Many of them use free and open source tools in their daily work and yet keep their core software locked to the public at large. That's essentially the two main arguments of FSM advocates and why they fight for code to be free. So what has the Free Software Foundation done to progress towards this goal? Since its inception in 1989, GPL has undergone two major revisions, version 2 in 1991 and the controversial version 3 in 2007. But its core philosophy has remained the same. It's defined by its adherence to four fundamental freedoms that are considered essential to any free software. Freedom 0, run the software for any purpose. Freedom 1, study how the software works through open access to its source code and change it to do what you want. Freedom to redistribute the copies of the software to anyone without any restrictions. Freedom 3. Modify the software and redistribute the modified software to anyone. 
WordPress is driven by exactly these freedoms. It's even listed on the website. One core tenet of GPL version 2 license is that if you make any modifications to the software license under it and plan to redistribute it, the modified code must also be licensed under GPL version 2 and released along with build and install instructions. You should note that as per Free Software Foundation's definition here, not all open source software is free software. Now when I say free, I mean free as in freedom of free speech, not free as in free beer, which I guess would be great too. But all free software is by definition open source. Some prominent software licensed under the GPL include Linux Kernel, which powers the Linux OS, which in turn powers most web servers. Media Wiki, the wiki software on which Wikipedia runs, the largest encyclopedia in the world. Major parts of the Android operating system, the most used mobile operating system in the world, and WordPress itself which powers more than 33% of all the websites. After looking at these stats, I'm not exaggerating when I say that free open source software has changed the world. So, what does this have to do with WordPress? WordPress was born out of the same philosophy as FSM. It was created in 2003 by Mike Little and Matt Nolan White. They started it by forking a popular but abandoned blogging platform called b 2 slash cafe log. You may find this hard to believe, but WordPress, the most popular blogging platform today, was itself conceived in a blog post by Matt, and its co-founder Mike was the first one to comment in support of it. This was posted by Matt on his blog in 2003 January. Mike Little commented soon after and the rest is history now. They could fork b2 slash cafe log because it was released under the GPL version 2 license. So anyone was free to do with it as they wished. As such, WordPress was also released under the same GPL version 2 license and still is to this day. In 2010, the WordPress founders established the WordPress Foundation as a charitable organization to further the mission of open source GPL software. It's also a way to distance themselves from it to avoid conflicts of interest, since they own and run a commercial service in parallel called WordPress.com. Today, WordPress is updated continuously and maintained by thousands of contributors from all walks of life spread across the world. What about WordPress themes and plugins? Are they free too? As per GPL version 2, all derivative works, such as plugins or themes in the case of WordPress, should inherit the GPL license too. Drupal, another popular CMS platform which uses the same GPL license as WordPress, has an in-depth licensing facts page which explains it clearly. It says that any Drupal module, their name for plugins, and theme is a derivative work of Drupal. If you distribute them, you must do so under the terms of the GPL version 2 or later. However, you are not required to distribute them at all. This seems simple, but in practice, it's much harder to enforce. There's some legal grey area when it comes to what's derivative work or not. According to WordPress.org's licensing page, they state that we feel strongly that plugins and themes are derivative work and thus inherit the GPL license. How exactly do people who make WordPress or WordPress developers make money? WordPress contributors and developers can follow any of the business models of open source software. They can use their knowledge and expertise to serve as consultants, provide support, or perhaps they can build custom applications on top of WordPress for clients ready to pay for their professional services. Some WordPress contributors also make money by creating valuable themes and plugins. These can be completely free, supported by voluntary donations or crowdfunding, free but with paid add-on features, aka a premium model, or totally paid to use. A few WordPress developers have found successful multi-million dollar enterprises. Some of these even offer hosting solutions optimized for WordPress. Automatic, a company started by WordPress founder Matt, is the perfect example of this. A 
It's notable for its WordPress.com platform. It provides an easy way for everyone to build a website without worrying about hosting and other tech heavy stuff. WPMU Dev is another example of such a successful business built around WordPress. Today, WordPress matches on as the most popular platform to build websites. Whether you want to build a simple personal blog or a complex website selling thousands of products, WordPress can do it all with ease. There are more than 54,000 free plugins listed on WordPress.org's repo alone, some of which are exceptionally excellent. As our commitment to the free software movement's mission, we have released free versions of our most popular pro plugins on WordPress.org. You can also find many beautiful free themes for WordPress, which make building any kind of website and setting them up a breeze. And if you want to go even further, WPMU Dev offers top-notch premium plugins and supercharged hosting, not to mention our amazing 24-7 support for whenever you need it. If you are using WordPress in any way, take pride in knowing that the spirit of the free software movement lives on 